Hi, this is Henning from flipnormals.com. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how we can sculpt hair. This has been a very highly requested topic and we're finally getting around to doing it. We're gonna be sculpting something very similar to what we're seeing in front of us now, just not as detailed, because this does take a fair bit of time. We're gonna go through some theory first uh, before we get into the more hardcore sculpting aspects of it. So I hope you enjoy. And let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do when we're sculpting here is we're gonna find reference as with pretty much any other part of sculpture. It's really hard to get nice and appealing here without proper reference. But more importantly for this, uh, I'm gonna show you how we can simplify it more. Like the biggest mistake I see when people are sculpting hair is they keep sculpting every single strand of hair. They keep doing like a big blob of hair and they go in immediately and start to render the living crap out of it, which it's simply not gonna work. If you're going for completely feature film quality for something, you're gonna use a hair system with, uh, we are gonna have every strand of hair, but for this kind of work, which is sculpture, it's gonna be stylized to some degree. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna simplify it down into big shapes. You see, for instance, on the forehead or this, the chunk coming out of a forehead here, you have to simplify it down into a big chunk. Same with the rest here. If you start going into detail too early, as we've been fairly adamant about in our other videos, it's gonna look really weird really quickly and there's gonna be no appeal in it at all. You put in what's called, or what we refer to as enhancement details, meaning you'd put in some strands of hair uh, around the model to define the surfaces here, to define the material as hair. Uh, for instance, if you're doing this area here, I would put in like some a strand here, a strand here and a strand there to define the negative space and define the creases in your hair, but you don't go in and do and sculpt every single strand. As an example of this, we can now also blur the image and you can still see that it works. You still see the big chunks and this is actually more what you're after. You're not doing, as I said before, you're not doing realistic hair. We're doing stylized hair to some degree. Same with some of my own sculpture. Let's just look at this guy. Uh, this is a model I did some time ago and while it, the hair is fairly detailed, it's not even remotely every single strand of hair. If you blur the image, you can still see it works. You still have the big shapes. You can, you can make out the big shapes. So that's pretty much the most important thing you can do when you sculpt hair. Simplify it down into big shapes. I would say this is essential. And with this said, let's get started with some actual sculpting. So this is the model we're gonna be using for um, uh, hair sculpture. The first step is you obviously need some geometry to sculpt on. You could of course sculpt directly on the head, but I prefer to keep it as a separate piece of geometry as it's, it's way, way easier. The first thing I do is I create a base mesh from uh, using mesh, mesh extraction. So just add a mask where you want the hair to be and use mesh extraction for that. I tend to avoid the ears as they're, they can create some pretty funky geometry. Something like this is totally acceptable for this. So hit go under subtool. Let's just full screen this. And hit extract. You get this weird helmet shape, uh, just review it. Hit extract, you have to hit extract every time you, you uh, rotate your model. Then hit accept. And it's now gonna be a separate subtool. And this is fine for now. We're now gonna use DynaMesh to just simplify the shape. Geometry, DynaMesh, and hit DynaMesh. The resolution is fairly low though, but that's fine just for now. I just want to block it out. So I have the reference on my second monitor now, and I would highly recommend you doing the same. You need reference on sculpting hair. So um, as I said before, you, you need, you don't sculpt hair with Symmetry Active. That's gonna kill 
that's gonna kill the hair immediately. Like you can sculpt the, uh, a face with symmetry and then then disable symmetry after a while and give it some asymmetry, but the hair has, it, there is not even remotely symmetrical unless it's by choice. So the first thing I do is I just block it out. Just remesh it by holding a control key and dragging outside and just blocking out with the move brush, getting the flow of the hair right, getting the big mass, the big mass of the hair down. And I want this to be flowing down around her, her head like this in a nice flowing fashion, like you saw in the model before. And this is not going to be too detailed because sculpting hair does take a fair bit of time. But it's going to it's going to prove a point. And it's going to be a it, this is the way I do it uh, for pretty much all my models which has hair in it. This is the way I do hair. So it's it's a proven technique. Look at the silhouette of it, hit the V key to look at the silhouette, and you want it to be nice and flowing. And I'm fairly happy with this right now. So increase the resolution. The resolution is based on the scale of your model. So you can't say a fixed number for that. Use a smooth brush to smooth everything down. You don't want the nasty squares. Uh, and for the majority of the time, you're going to be sculpting with the clay buildup brush. At least that's what I prefer to use. I find a clay buildup to be an excellent brush for sculpting hair, as you're adding like really big chunks of polish down. So clay buildup, but a disable the alpha. At least that's what's giving me the best results. We can actually disable um, Dynamesh at this point. We don't really need it. You can also do a zero measure of it, just to keep, get some nice working topology. So, nice even quads. Just hit zero measure once, before and after. I'll, I'll usually go over with zero measure a couple of times. So this is a nice starting base. Uh, let's actually add some some big shapes into this. Subdivide a couple of times, and then let's just add some big chunks of hair. Keep your brush size big. You really, really don't want to go into details at this stage. Only the big flowing chunks. I like to go into uh, and defining where, where the hair is starting from, as this helps to direct the flow later on. And the rule at this stage is simply to keep it clean. Also as a general tip, think of overlaps. Like for instance here, there is a nice overlap. One shape going like this, and one shape going under it. And going under it, and going under it. It just makes it look really nice and appealing if you keep overlaps in mind. That's a general sculpting trick as well. Overlaps can do magic for your for your gesture. Uh, once I'm done with uh, this stage uh, of using the clay build up brush, uh, I'll go over everything with a standard brush. The standard brush is super nice for uh, for defining the hair more, adding ad adding smaller detail, adding some some strands. And um, as this will take some time and it's just a lot of labor, I will put this into time lapse now.
So after about 10-15 minutes of sculpting on this uh, with the clay billet brush, it's now time to go in and define some more features of this using a standard brush. As you can see when I was sculpting this as well, I wasn't only using the clay billet, I was also smoothing out a fair bit. Uh, as hair is inherently a very smooth thing, you don't want to have too many brush strokes in it, unless it, you do it on purpose. So let's start with some um, standard brush to define some more features. I haven't done the entire hair right now because it's simply going to take too much time, so I'm only doing the front part of it. That said, I'm still blocking out the rest uh, as, it, as it keeps my as it, as it can then keep my head wrapped around what's going on here, as the back of the, the head will influence the front of it. So keep um, a small brush size, and let's just start defining stuff. Getting in and just defining some more, some more shapes. As a general sculpting tip as well, I feel it's really nice if you start your stroke in a soft manner, then increase the hardness, and then fade it out as you go. Instead of having a stroke which is like, which is, let's just show it here, sort of it once more. Instead of having a stroke which is like this, then having a stroke, let's just see here, stroke which goes like soft, and then fades out. Soft and hard, you can also vary this. It just, it just makes it visually more interesting. Just a little pro tip for you there. You also want to hold on the Alt key and carve in a little bit to define some, some shapes as well. And again, we're not doing single, single pieces of hair. This is not a time thing. It's not like if, if I had all the time in the world, I still wouldn't do it. It simply makes it look unappealing in my, in my taste. It just becomes noise after a while. So you can already start to see that we're getting some definition into it. So I'm going all around the model and I'm also evaluating the silhouette as I go. This face doesn't influence the silhouette too much, but you still want the silhouette to work with it. And be careful where you're adding detail as well. Keep it, you know, or keep it over. Keep it over the entire model. Don't focus it just on one point. That said, if you want to focus somewhere, uh, it is a good idea to focus your detail in that area. For instance, if you're doing uh, a character, and you want to focus on the eyes, it can be a good idea to to keep your details around the eyes. So just adding. Just adding details now, really. And as I will just keep doing the same thing over and over again, it's time to go to time lapse mode.
So this is uh, the final result after about 20-25 minutes of sculpting. As you can see, it's still fairly rough in some areas, like the back part here, but the front is fairly refined. For final sculpt, I would take a little bit further than this, but not a whole lot, to be perfectly honest. If we take it into Photoshop and blur it a little bit, you can see that even without the detail, or even without any kind of individual strands, it still works. We still have the main big shapes, and you can clearly see the gesture of the hair. And if you get the, the, the main gesture of the hair working, as I said before, half the battle is over. After, um, after you're going to run with um, the standard brush as well, I sometimes go over with the damn standard just to give it like a little bit of an extra polish. I hold down the Alt key and I just give it a little bit of extra, extra sharpness in some areas. But um, this is about it. I hope you find this tutorial useful and um, go sculpt some hair. Thank mm -hmm. you.